Hey guys, today we're gonna use the Ducati Scrambler to talk about brakes. How to maintain them properly, what do you need to look for while you use them, how they work, and on and on and on. But now for the chit chat, let's get on it. So it turns out that to make a complete video about brakes, it takes more than 30 minutes. So I had to split this video in half and make the first uh, part right now. And the next part is gonna come out in a week. Unlike my usual schedule every two weeks, you guys are gonna get another video next week. So stay tuned and look for it. First thing we need to take care is when and how to use the brakes. This is gonna be short. I know you guys ride motorcycles, so you mostly know how to use them. When you use the brake, you're supposed to use both brakes. It doesn't matter what the local Ducati Panigale riding guy keeps telling you to only use the front brake. You need to use both. You need to use the front and the back. Look at the guys in MotoGP, they use both brakes. On dirt, is the same thing. Now, when you ride street, you mostly use the front brake with a little bit of the rear brake. When you ride on dirt, you mostly use the rear brake with a little bit of front brake, especially if you ride a big ADV. The big ADV uh, bike coming down a hill it's not going to stop if you only use the rear brake. So I understand there is a lot of uh, street roses out there that keep telling you, oh, on the street, you only ride the front brake, is the front brake and blah, blah, blah. First of all, if you have soft suspensions like uh, a big ADV bike or, or even the scrambler, the, the suspension on this thing are horrendous for street and uh, uh, dirt. If you have soft suspension, you need to load the front fork before you can actually apply uh, some good force to it. How you load it? You can use the rear brake. When you push on the rear brake, the bike will set on the front and then you can squeeze the living hell <laughs> out of the front brake and get in rather than you're going as fast as you can and then you start pinching hard on the front brake and all of a sudden the bike goes down. That going down put excess uh, force on the front tire and that might be the thing that actually make the front tire go loose and you washing out. When it comes to how hard you're supposed to push or pull on the brakes, well, that's a feeling that you're gonna acquire over time. One thing to remember on brakes is uh, if you're in a turn leaning over and you're braking, the moment you pinch that brake hard in the turn, the bike will want to stand up. And that's what sends most of those uh, Harley slash big bike riders like uh, uh, a Goldwing or uh, a BMW ST 1600 or th those big bikes. That's what send them straight through a turn. First of all, they come in too fast. Second, instead of braking before the turn and then letting go, maybe with a little bit of trail braking, getting the turn, most people get all out to the turn and then they realize, man, I'm way too fast for this and grab a handful of brake. And when that happens, the bike will tend to stand up and off you go straight in whatever direction. Knowing how to use the brake will come with experience. We all make mistakes. I have scars to prove it on my arm, mostly with a Vespa, but uh, riding, riding a mixture of street and dirt, you're really gonna start to understand how, when, and why uh, use the brakes the way you do. But now that you know how to use the brake, let's go deep into it and see what the brakes actually do. Hey guys, before we continue with the brakes, I really want to take a minute to recommend something. And it's one of those N-Gear uh, gadget wallets. This is one of those new slick wallets that are out there right now. The real strength on this one is that it's highly customizable. Not just the material it's made of. Mine is made out of carbon fiber, actual carbon fiber. But I'm talking about the color. I'm talking about, as you guys can see, there is my logo printed on it. 
The reason why I really like this one is because the front plate can be removed and when the front plate is removed you can replace it with whatever else. Company logo, motorcycle picture, their company logo. It's, uh, it's really nice, it's really sturdy, but most of all, for me, it's little and strong enough to take on the dirt bike when I go dirt biking. I would love to have uh, to customize it to the fullest because you can actually attach stuff to the side of the wallet, but I really need it as sleek, small as possible wallet. So this is what I chose. Go take a look at the website. I put a link in the description. I'm not getting paid for this. It's just because I love this thing so much. Brakes come in all shapes and sizes, but it, there are a few distinctions we need to make. First of all, there are disc brake and drum brakes. Drum brakes is a thing of the past. We don't really have drum brakes in new motorcycles anymore, but if you're riding a vintage bike, you might see that instead of this nice shiny disc back here, you have like a, a drum in the center of the wheel. Inside the drum, there are pads that actually push out and brake against the cylinder of the drum. Forget about those new modern motorcycle have disc brakes. Disc brakes, you have a nice rotor, that disc shape in the middle, and then you have a caliper. What the caliper does, it pinches on the brake, creating friction and slowing down, stopping the, the wheel itself. Now that we have those two distinctions, the brakes can be operated either hydraulically so there is actual fluid, hydraulic fluid, or brake fluid, I should say, that goes from a reservoir into a pump and to the caliper. Or they can be operated via cable. Now, same thing, cable brakes are not there anymore. Old, old motorcycles might still have cable brakes, but in the modern world, the most you're gonna find is a cable clutch rather than a cable brake. So today we're gonna to focus on disc brakes and we're gonna focus on hydraulic disc brakes. We, we know that there is a front brake and a rear brake. Same thing, the front brake is actuated by your hand on the handlebar while the rear brake is actuated by your foot, usually on the right hand side down here. But that is not always the case. There are mods to do on your bike where you can actually use the brake, uh, the rear brake on the handlebar. Uh, see uh, the guys in MotoGP that have uh, a rear brake on a thumb on the left hand side so that they can dangle the leg out as they're going through the turn or obviously the stunt guys that sometimes their feet are just spread up in the air, they can't use the rear brake but you need a rear brake when you do wheelies so there you have it. Remember, the brakes are a safety component when it comes to motorcycles. The brakes will stop you uh, from riding straight into something, a car, a wall, a pole. The brakes will help when you are riding fast and you need to get into a turn. And another thing that most people seem to forget, to go fast, you need to have good brakes. It seems counterintuitive. I understand that the opinion out there is that to go fast, you need the biggest winglets up front as you can. But that is actually not the case. To go fast, you need to be able to stop fast and in the shortest dist shorter distance so that can you apply the travel again and get fast out. What the winglets do is apply downforce onto the wheels so that when you pinch on the brake there is enough downforce on the wheel to keep it solid and your brakes are more effective. We're finally at the part where we're going to discuss how we need to maintain the brakes properly. Remember, I'm not a mechanic, I just have a passion for this thing and I tend to obsess just a little bit on doing things the right way. The first thing you need to take care when we talk about brakes is brake pads. The brake pads are gonna be the first thing to go on a motorcycle. 
the brake pads up front are gonna be the one that go first. The brake pads in the back, they usually, it's usually if you use the brakes properly, is a two to one. So you replace twice the front brake, once the rear brake in a certain amount of time. When it comes to the brake pads, there are all sorts of shapes, uh, all sorts of material used to make the brake pads. The question is, do you want quiet brakes? Do you want stronger brakes? Do you want brakes for the track? Do you want brakes for the street? What I see a lot out there is that uh, people buy brakes that are really made for track use because they think that they use the brakes that well when in reality an organic uh, brake uh, pad will do just as well as one of those ceramic uh, uh, carbon fibery aramid whatever crazy material they use to make the brake pads when you're choosing a pad check out the manufacturer website there is a ton a ton of information that will recommend the best brakes for your application. If, for example, on a scrambler, you put uh, brakes that are really made for racing, uh, the problem is the brakes are going to squeal a lot. They're not going to function properly because the brake pads made for racing need to be at a certain temperature, a temperature that you're not going to be able to achieve on a scrambler. Make the right choice. Inform yourself before actually committing. I cannot recommend any brake over another because each motorcycle needs a specific kind of brake. I'm not gonna use the same brake pads on the Scrambler that I do on my Aprilia Tuono, same as I'm not gonna use the same on, on my Africa Twin. Every bike needs what is best for what you do with that specific bike. Now, another thing, every brake pad as a groove usually in the middle that will tell you how much meat is left on the pad itself so keep an eye and it's really easy to check you just need to look in there grab a flashlight look in there and you'll see the groove if the groove is still there you're a-okay if the groove is not there anymore might be time to replace the brake pad Changing the brake pad is really, really easy. I have a, a few videos that explain it on multiple bikes. You guys can look through, uh, through my videos. You, you'll find it easier. I'll maybe I'll link it here somewhere. But easy enough, that is the first thing to maintain on brakes. Second thing to maintain is the disc or rotor itself. There is actually a minimum thickness for the rotors. Usually on modern bikes uh, uh, or bikes that are not used in a track environment, it takes years to actually wear down the, the, the rotor. So that is usually not a concern, but on older bike that actually becomes an issue. Another thing is, if you let your brake pads wear out too much and you get to the metal portion of the brake pad that is not supposed to be used, they will create grooves. Now, if you look at my Scrambler brake pads, it looks like there are a lot of grooves in there, but they're not. They're minimal grooves, so much so that you can not even feel them at this point because when the brake pad start rubbing on it we leave marks when i'm talking about grooves i'm actually talking about when you run your fingernail through the brake uh, uh, rotor will actually catch and you'll you'll feel that catching now if your fingernail catches means that the groove is quite deep and if that's the case you might gonna have to replace the disc itself if you're unsure on any of this, even just a shadow of doubt, go to a professional mechanic. Changing the brake pads, really easy to do. But if you screw up just a little bit, it might be catastrophic. 
So if you have even a shadow of a doubt, go to a professional mechanic. And this is it. That's how they work. That's how you're supposed to maintain them. That's how you're supposed to use them. This is in no way supposed to make you a brake guru, but I hope I can give you a general understanding and cut down on a whole bunch of myth that, uh, that gravitate around uh, the brakes. So now you know what to look for, you know uh, what to do in case you see one of those problems and hopefully it'll save you some money. When it comes to money, thank you very much to my patrons because they're helping a lot and I really, really appreciate them. If you want to become a patron, check the link in the descriptions. Uh, if you don't want to become a patron and you just want to help the channel, get yourself one of those Master Shade 3 Mechanic shirt. They're fantastic. Go check them out. Other than that, thank you very much to all for watching my videos and constantly coming back time after time to listen to me yap about motorcycles. So work on your bike and I'll see you next time.